Hello. I just wanted to share with you something I got in the mail today. I actually thought it was lost. So I got my March Book of the Month Club uh, picks. I actually, uh, yesterday, they were sent out uh, March 1st, I think, and I still hadn't gotten them. And it's like almost the end of March. So I talked to them yesterday and they said they would send me a new order. Surprise, surprise, I got it today. So I wrote them right back and said, hey, if you haven't sent it, don't send it yet because I've got my pick, which I'm super excited about. So I do wanna share those with you. Here we go. I'm gonna put on my reading glasses so I can read to you a little bit about what each book is about. I'm very excited about these. The covers are beautiful. Here we go. The first one I got, which was my main pick, was The Adventures of Amina Al Sarifi by Shannon Chakraborty. I probably am not saying that correctly, but look at the stunning cover. Oh, it's gorgeous. This looks like so much fun. So a pirate, here we go. I'm just gonna read you a quick synopsis. Uh, let's see. Amina Al Sarifi should be content after a storied and scandalous career as one of the Indian Ocean's most notorious pirates. She survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant princes, several husbands, and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family to a life of piety, motherhood, and absolutely nothing that hints at the supernatural. And that's the end of the book. Nah, I'm joking, of course. But when she's tracked down by the obscenely wealthy mother of a former crewman, she's offered a job that no bandit could refuse. Retrieve her comrade's kidnapped daughter for a kingly sum. The chance to have one last adventure with her crew, to do right by an old friend, and win a fortune that will secure her family's future forever? Hmm, it seems like such an obvious choice that it must be God's will. will. Yet the deeper Amina dives, the more it becomes alarmingly clear that there's more to this job and the girl's disappearance than she was led to believe. For there's always risk in wanting to become a legend, to seize one last chance to glory, to save her just a bit more power, and the price might be your very own soul. Yes, 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 yes. Very excited. Oh, an adventure of the sea. Oh, this sounds great. I'm very excited about that one. And then I got two extras um, because I couldn't resist because they sound also very amazing. So this one is the last Russian doll. And luckily, luckily I got my package today because she did say that this was out of stock now and so I would not be able to get it, um, but they would give me a credit. So I'm actually really glad this came today because otherwise I wouldn't have this book, The Last Russian Doll. And another gorgeous cover. This is by Kristen Loesch. Again, I could be mispronouncing. I'm not great at reading names. Okay, in a faraway kingdom in a long ago land, a young girl lived happily in Moscow with her family, a sister, a father, and an eccentric mother who liked to tell fairy tales and collect porcelain dolls. One summer night, everything changed, and all that remained of that family were the girl and her mother. Now, a decade later, and studying at the University of Oxford, Rosie has an English name, a loving fiance and a promising future, but all she wants is to understand and bury the past. After her mother dies, Rosie returns to Russia armed with a little more than her mother's strange folklore and a single key. What she uncovers is a devastating family history that spans the 1917 revolution, the siege of Leningrad, Stalin's purges and beyond. At the heart of this saga stands a young noblewoman, Tanya, as pretty as a porcelain doll, whose actions and love for an idolistic man will set off a sweeping story that reverberates across the century. But it does sound like a saga. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. The last Russian doll. And finally, Lone Women, uh, a, a horror novel. This is by Victor Laval. Now, when I got this today, my daughter was like, oh, I know that name. He wrote, he wrote the very best, uh, I think, Sabretooth comic that she's ever read. Hopefully I'm right when I say Sabretooth, because I could be wrong. <laughs> anyway, so she's my comic girl. She knows everything comics. And so she was like, 
this is great. So let's see what this one's about. Another lovely cover, by the way. Okay. Adelaide Henry carries an enormous steamer trunk with her wherever she goes. It's locked at all times because when the trunk opens, people around Adelaide start to disappear. The year is 1915 and Adelaide is in trouble. Her secret sin killed her parents, forcing her to flee California in a hellfire rush and make her way to Montana as a homesteader. Dragging the trunk with her at every stop, she will become one of the lone women, taking advantage of the government's offer of free land for those who can tame it. Except that Adelaide is not alone, and the secret she tried so desperately to lock away might be the only thing that will help her survive the harsh territory. Crafted by a modern master of magical suspense, Lone Women blends shimmering prose and unforgettable casts of adventurers who find horror and sisterhood in a brutal landscape, and a portrait of early 20th century America like you've never seen. And at its heart is the gripping story of a woman desperate to bury her past or redeem it. I'm excited. This sounds really good. All of them sound really good, so I definitely have some reading to do. <laughs> and speaking of reading to do, this is the book that I just started last night when I went to bed. So I am, yeah, let's see, how much am I in? I'm on chapter four now, page 84. And this is called Outlawed by Anna North. Super good. <laughs> so I just started it. I didn't really know too much about it. It is, actually, I'll just read you the synopsis again. I hope you don't mind me just reading synopsis. Okay, the day of her wedding, 17-year-old Ada's life looked good. She loves her husband, and she loves working as an apprentice to her mother, a respected midwife. But after a year of marriage and no pregnancy, in a town where barren women were routinely hanged as witches, her survival depends on leaving behind everything she knows. She joins up with the notorious Hole in the Wall Gang, a band of outlaws led by a preacher-turned-robber known to all as the Kid. Charismatic, grandose, grandiose, and mercurial, I'm learning how to say some new words, the kid is determined to create a safe haven for outcast women. But to make this dream a reality, the gang hatches a treacherous plan that may get them all killed, and Ada must decide whether she's willing to risk her life for the possibility of a new kind of future for them all. Future, featuring an unresist... Okay. Featuring an irresistibly no-nonsense, courageous, and determined heroine, Outlawed dusts off the myth of the Old West and reignites the glimmering promise of the frontier with an entirely new set of feminist stakes. Anna North has crafted a pulse-racing, page-turning saga about the search for hope in the wake of death and for truth in a climate of small-mindedness and fear. And I have to say, it started off really good. I, I think this book is going to be absolutely fantastic. So I'll let you know when I finish reading it and what my thoughts were. And also another gorgeous cover. I love the colors. You don't really see much pink on covers like this. So I think it really works. Hello. So I know you just watched my little video of my book of the month club picks. So I did mention in there that I had started Outlawed. And I did read it all. And unfortunately, even though I was really loving it in the very beginning, it started to, I found a, a few factors in here that I just, I didn't care for. And I had a hard time getting past them. So I ended up giving this book two stars. I didn't absolutely hate it, but I just didn't love it. So I'm sorry. I don't like that. I don't like reading a whole book and then finding myself disappointed by it or even feeling a bit icked out. Like there were parts in this book that the message is good. Like I get the idea of it. It's like Handmaid's Tale. Like I get it. But the story was kind of like, it wasn't super smoothly written. So oftentimes it would jump like unpredictably um you didn't really get to know the characters that well um i found the main uh leader of this the whole in the game group to be a little bit i don't know a little culty maybe 
I don't want to say that because I, I'm sure that was not the intention of the book. Um, but the main thing that made me feel an ick factor was the constant mention of how women are meant to breed and that is what they are for. And I know that that was the point of the book, but even the main character um, goes through the story and still seems to have that those thoughts in her head. And she doesn't seem to really get over it. Like she, her goal is to find out why women can't breed and to help them. So, whereas that is not all we are good for. So, also there was like a gay baiting. I don't know if that's what you call it, but where, you know, there were, the girls were talking about how to trick gay men into having sex with them. That is just not okay. That is that that pushed me past the limit of being able to give it any more than two stars. Um, I just I just didn't love it. So, oh, sorry, I'm surprised because I always like the books from Reese's Book Club. Um, and maybe if I read it again, maybe in a different mindset, or I may not be the right person to talk about this book or to tell you my reasons for not liking it or for liking it. Um, so maybe I need to just hear what other people have to say about it. Um, anyways, so enough about this one. <laughs> so on another note, I am reading um, some other books now. I have a few. I will be posting another video showing that I'm going to be reading through some of books with the covers of my favorite color. Um, purple. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's stay tuned and see what's up. Bye.